Okay, what's up guys? As you can tell by the title in the video, I'm making this comparing this thermal place right here to this right here. I um when I got my computer, I'm gonna go show you my computer up there. Focus in. When I built this over break, I did not have any extra thermal place marked to silver five ran out, so I had to use this Floor master stuff right here. Sorry for the slow focusing, but yeah, this is the cooler master stuff that came with my Hyper 212 Evo. I'll link the cooler um, in the link below. But um, yeah, and so I'm gonna compare the stock, stock thermal paste right here to the new PK3 thermal paste. I got this off eBay, $5. I actually got it for free because I had five dollars in eBay bucks. So I'm gonna compare for you: Is it worth paying five dollars plus, depending on your what thermal compound you get? So you can. I think I paid ten dollars for Arctic Silver Five when I got it. But is it worth paying the extra money for good thermal compound? Okay, for me to do this test, it's not going to be terribly a scientific test, but it's going to be as accurate as I can make it. The temperature in my room varies a lot, um, so I'm actually going to I'm going to go bring this up here. I have a thermometer right there. It says 76 degrees Fahrenheit, but I'm only going to use Fahrenheit for people who want to know in America um, that temperature. Otherwise. I'll use Celsius if I can get this changed. I'll cut to that right now. Okay, I got it changed. It's 24.7 degrees um, Celsius. <coughs> that is um, 76, as I said before, degrees Fahrenheit. So about 25 degrees Celsius. And that's what I'm going to be currently um, stress testing my computer at. At, and that's the ambient temp temperature. Come down right here. Zoom in. My computer is at 4.3 gigahertz. It's an i7 3820. Like I said before, I have a Hyper 212. I mean Hyper Cooler Master. Um, Hyper 212 Evo, if I'm correct. I'm. I managed to get that cooler for $30 off Amazon and it just randomly dropped in price a few dollars and it's like, well, gotta buy it. It's gonna get a, I had to get a cooler anyway for my CPU, so it's like, might as well, it's because it's the best bang for your bucks CPU cooler. And um, I happened to come with thermal, thermal paste, so I didn't have to wait. But yeah, 4.3 gigahertz, 1.285 volts is what it's set in the um, BIOS, but it varies, of course, because of V droop and such like that. Um, I'm not even. I'm not gonna go to detail of the settings. I'm in the BIOS. I think I put everything else on auto, which stays at actually stays at stock because all I changed was the CPU multiplier and um, core clock speed and voltage. That's all I changed. But um, my, my goal is to get to 4.6 gigahertz. But it seems like it's getting a tad bit too hot right now. But anyways, like. I'm going to be using that, and I'm going to be using hardware monitor, HW monitor, to record the temperatures. This is just up to 50 degrees web browsing, and that's how it's idling right now, with um, two monitors, if that actually matters, and such like that. Can't actually tell if that's in focus, but um, I'm going to be using Prime 95 to run this test. I guess I'll run it for probably about 15 minutes. And if you look over here, there's a large FFT that gets the maximum heat. I, I stress test using um, Blin, so I never would get this intensive. Most I'll do is encode in video overnight for stuff. But yeah, I'm going to let this run for 15 minutes, and I'll show you the temperatures after that's done. 
Okay, I thought actually while that was running, it's been running for a few minutes already. And it's got to about upper 60s, about pinging at 70 degrees Celsius currently right now. And I'm going to run through just the system, so stuff like that. It's mainly the cooling system right now. I have a fan controller up here, and then I have the, that fan in the front right there. The two fans on the side right there. My light fell off and I need to get some glue and get that back up there. The glue strips fell, Velcro strips fell off from it. Uh, and then I have the 80 millimeter on top, which actually does help quite a bit. And then the 120 on the back. The one on the back is controlled by um, the motherboard, and which surprisingly I didn't realize it would work because um, the motherboard has PD PWM pulse width modulation, um, four pin fan connectors all across it, and there are three pins, and this all these fans except for the one on the CPU cooler are three pin fans, and I guess it just adjusts the voltage of the um, of the the, the fan port, I suppose, on the motherboard. And the one in the back right there, I found this out last night, so it actually improved my cooling some. One on the back right there actually will brighten up some when it goes to 100% CPU versus when it's off. It'll, right now it's the brightest, but it'll be once it's um the CPU clocks down or it's not being used as much, it won't be as bright. For instance, I can show you. I don't know if you can tell very much. I just turn up the two fans on the side. You can see a little bit of a dimming. So yeah, you can see that one. That fan, I don't usually turn up at all. The one on the bottom, sometimes I will turn it up. But um, that's just to cool off the graphics card mainly. One in the front, I keep at max all the time because I want good cool air to come in the front, and then the, all the hot air to blow out the back. And the middle, uh, top one, I leave at like medium because it gets kind of loud if I turn it all the way up. But yeah, then if you look inside the case, I have the Hyper 212 Vivo. But I did not say before, this is a push-pull configuration. Not the best. It has a stock fan right there, as you're looking at. And on the other side right here, I can't really show it. Yeah, it has another 120 millimeter fan. It does not go as fast, but I don't think it should hinder anything since it's still spinning and helping to suck out the heat and create a low pressure zone. So I think it should still help versus having just one fan on there. Uh, I'm also thinking I could have pasted it wrong or did something of that matter, but that's what I'm hoping to figure out when I re-thermal this with the PK3. If you have any questions, remember to comment below. And I'll cut to the video once this test has reached 15 minutes. Okay, it's now been 15 minutes. Now I'll zoom in on the temperatures right here. Zoom in. So you can see max is 71 degrees Celsius. 69, 70 has been right about where it is, so that gives us good even numbers. 76 degrees Fahrenheit ambient, and 24.8, or I'm just going to round up to 25 degrees Celsius ambient temperatures. So, I suck at math right now, I guess that's 65, right? So 71, or um, 66, or whatever. Minus 25, wow, okay, never mind, I already suck at math. That's 46. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's 46 degrees and max temperatures. What I'm thinking is, since it's, you can see it's 69 there and it's 65, 62, and 66. I think I got the thermal paste spread wrong in the first place. And so the first core is hotter, which is always possible. It could be just running run hotter overall. But you always go by the hottest core. And it's still running over 15 minutes now and it seems to be peak pegged right about 70 degrees average for the highest core and highest it got period is 71 for the first core 
67 degrees, second core, 65 third, and 68 for the fourth. And apparently he's using 140-ish watts. And that Hyper 212 Evo can only handle about 130, apparently. I think it's 130. And I just looked that up real quick, and I was wrong. It actually says on Amazon's website over here, it actually says 180. And it, you can see the little ice pad. I'll do a separate review on this cooler later. But it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty nice cooler. I think the safe temperature for these new Core Sevens for like not 24 hour use is like 80 degrees. I suppose depending on how your voltage is. voltage almost matters more really than um, than temperature nowadays. But um, yeah, I'm gonna cut now to the new thermal paste. I'm not sure when that's gonna happen. It could be days after this, it could be tonight, I'm not sure, but you'll, you won't have to wait, because it'll be cut right now. Okay, the new thermal paste is now on. It took me actually quite some time. As a quick note for this PK3 thermal paste, it's very thick and very hard to spread. There's another video, probably you'll see in the related video, it's a guy who compared PK1 to and 3 compared those and like an acrylic plate and the dot method to spread I actually manually spread my thermal paste and it was it was a pain it's like a really thick paste and it was hard to spread correctly so I had some issues with that but it was worth it in the long run because um I guess you can see those at idle temperatures a little bit of web browsing peaked up to 50 and 46 stuff um before you could tell it was about a couple degrees warmer what I've noticed, I've done already tests before I made this video. This is, I think, a couple weeks after. So if it had any break, break in time, even though it says it doesn't have a break in time, it's broken in now. It's been, I've been using this for at least a couple weeks now with the new thermal paste. But I think it, um, overall it seems to be about 2, degree, two to the 3 degrees Celsius less. But I'll show that with the video in Prime 95 and such. This is just idling right here. I think it idled actually around... Um, Third, um, minimum 38 and like around 40 before and as you can see the idle temperature um, is quite a bit uh, is noticeably not quite a bit but noticeably lower and the proof is still at the same temperature uh, 25 24.9 degrees celsius right there and then I think it was like 24.7 trying to remember from a couple weeks ago but yeah and then the voltage and everything else is pretty much the same what I'm going to do is start up Prime 95. It's probably out of focus, but. And start a blend test. Probably hear the sound. My fans kicked in. There's quite a bit more of it. Like, I don't think it heats up quite as fast either. Before, I think it got, and on the old test, it got to 71 degrees Celsius. And this one, it, um, I think it was around 69, 70. It peaked at 70, but the other one did peak at 72 eventually. So, it was, it was, I think it was for sure, it was definitely 1 degree Celsius less. If most, most of the time it's about 2 degrees Celsius less, and occasionally, um, and depending on the circumstance, maybe one a core, so it's about 3 degrees Celsius less. And so I'm going to let this run for 15 minutes again, like the old one, and get back to you then. Okay, it's been 15 minutes with this test. I think it's actually ran a little bit cooler than I did last time, so this could have changed some. But, you can see, <laughs> once I focus it, it's, uh, it's about 4.3 gigahertz to 1.272 volts was last time it's has the temperatures is that now it peaked at 68 versus 71 so that's 3 degrees celsius less right there and it's been a little bit less but it varies on the test i guess it's my temperature my thermometer could be exactly the same but the air temperature still could be lower it varies 
quite a lot, I guess. But it's hands down definitely lower. Is it worth you buying five dollars to of special thermal paste? Well, that depends how much you're overclocking, I guess. Because eventually I'm gonna want to overclock more. So probably yes for me, and I just want my CPU to last longer and have cooler and everything else. If you're not overclocking, no reason whatsoever to buy it. None whatsoever to buy this thermal paste. Just use the stuff that came with the heat sink, and you're good. If you're overclocking only like a little bit, only like 10%, still no reason to get this. But I am think I'm overclocking. I don't know how much percentage I'm not good at doing that in my head, as <laughs> stated before. Um, 4.3 gigahertz versus I think stock is 3.6 so you guys can do the map however much that is my goal is 4.6 which might be possible now since it's lower but I haven't had the time to try going up there yet but yeah if you have any questions about this thermal compound or anything else please comment below and thanks for watching